Okay, okay, we have another video from Mr. Baseless Yupen. He's got episode 4 cut content from Coat. Let's see what he has to say. Classroom of the Elite Season 3 Episode 4 is here. Okay. And this episode genuinely surprised me because I expected them to jam the rest of Volume 9 into this episode and but they end didn't? off this arc. But instead we ended up with an episode that has the least amount of cut content so far. I hear a lot of people actually happy about it. <laughs> Giga Chat Hirata. But yeah, last episode I hear the pacing was pretty good. And the content that was covered was very reasonable compared to the, you know, what they usually do is just fucking take in fucking three volumes and scram it into fucking one episode, right? Adapting only around 60 pages. <laughs> only 60 pages! That's an improvement, dude. That's an improvement compared to like 200. To the previous episodes, adapting as much as 150 plus pages. Though it does mean that one of the next three volumes is gonna be two episodes instead of three. No! no. Uh oh. Oh? Me? But. Koenji doesn't have time for first years. Koenji's too busy fucking third year girls. I'm gonna act like I don't see that. Which really sucks because okay. the next three volumes All are right. so much better than volume eight and nine. Also, it's really ironic how the episode with the least amount of cut content looks the worst so far. But did it? I did I? I mean, okay. The one thing I had a little that I kind of called out in terms of the animation was the elevator scene where Koji was literally going down the elevator, and the camera angle was angled down like this, and they held that frame for like six seconds, and I'm like, what are you? What are we doing? Because like, to be honest, I don't care about the art and the animation quality for a show specifically for an anime where there's no action not really that much action yes we know there's fight scenes but it's a fucking show about mind games and dialogues what the fuck do you need good animation for now do i want better animation absolutely but is poor animation going to deter my experience of classroom elite not really as long as they do good enough job with the dialogue and the soundtrack that's being played that, that's all i care about let's just not talk about that in this video and focus on the cut content, such as where did Ayano Koji get the other four chocolates from? Yeah, he got form from Sakura, he got form from K. Uh, what were the other three? Um, and a Hashimoto POV chapter. As usual, comment down below if you have any questions about the episode or things that you did not understand. And now, without wasting any more time, let's, go. let's get started. Let's go. The talk between Ayano Koji and K from the beginning of the episode was fairly faithful to the LN with the only cuts being Ayano Koji's inner thoughts and him getting a message from Sakura This bitch, what you messaging him for huh? What you text him? Seeing that she wants to meet him what? After which we move on It's funny how the anime just cut her off there, damn They didn't even give Sakura a chance at the last time's episode huh? So she actually texted Koji saying they want to meet up but they just completely off-screened all of that and basically the only recognition of her is the pouch of chocolates with her name on it at the end <laughs> It's kind of sad. Move on to the first cut scene from the episode, which was a really funny interaction with Ayano Koji and Hirata. Mm. That I'm really sad did not make it into the anime. What happened? On his way to classes, Kiyo encounters Hirata on the elevator and notices that Hirata is late to the class when he's usually there the earliest. Did he get bombarded with chocolate gifts from the girls? What happened? Kiyo tries to ask him what's going on, though Kiyo gets the answer himself when the door to the elevator opens and he sees six girls yeah! from all different classes six girls! waiting for Hirata to give him different classes not one C not our class different classes wants to give him chocolates chocolates and Kiyo thinks to himself that this must have been happening all morning causing him to go back to his room to drop the bro has so many chocolates he's just been going back and forth and just dropping it off bro this is Hirate is a fucking giga chat, huh? He really is. We don't really, you know, we, we still haven't really gotten to what's wrong with Hirata arc yet, right? Because there's something that's very hidden. And I believe in the opening, Hirata's card, he's like the, the heart of Jokers or some shit, right? Which implies that this character might be really fucked in the head. Which pretty much kind of confirms that, you know, him being all nice like this. Everybody has defects. What is his defect? We're not there yet. Chocolate's off. Kiyo thinks about waiting for Hirata so they can go to classes together, but he notices the girls very clearly staring at him and wondering, why mm. the hell are you here? <laughs> but Koji's pretty hot. I thought the girls wouldn't shit on him so bad. After which, Kiyo hurries to the classes after saying bye to Hirata. 
and now we have a line from Kyo which I'm genuinely mad that they cut out especially oh? because the pacing wasn't horrible in this episode and the line is Kyo saying that he would like to receive some I kind of wanted to be given chocolates before I did something like uh like get a girlfriend which surprised me to tell the truth I hadn't thought I was capable of wanting such things even faintly. Again, more light novel passages to really confirm Aonokoji's character as being much more human than how he's depicted in the anime. He wants to be, you know, in a relationship. He wants to know what love is. And he probably thinks that K, she probably can maybe be that for him, right? But like in the anime, you wouldn't really suspect any of these things, especially last episode where fucking Hashimoto walks up. <laughs> What's up, girl? Wallbank technique. <laughs> Koji, you looking? Nope, he's already turned around and saying goodbye. Some chocolates, and even he himself was surprised because he never thought he was capable of wanting such things, even faintly. It's moments like these that make Ayana Koji such an amazing character. Mm. These moments of humanity you wouldn't expect. Exactly, the anime intensely cuts this shit off. They're like, nope, making a cool, cold, calculating robot. That's it. Ruthless. We don't want to give him any humanizing aspects. And the feeling that he doesn't even understand himself completely. And the anime cuts out all these moments. Yeah, intentionally. Which is so frustrating. They cut all of it out. Moving on to the classroom scene where Sudo is teasing EK about Shinohara. There was actually fucking Hondo made it into the video too, dude. EK and Shinohara is a new development that I didn't think was uh, possible. I thought EK was deadlocked on Kikyo, Kushida. I thought that it was just Kushida he was going for, you know, and of course other girls, that's a minimum seven out of 10. Not by my standards, but this is from EK's words from the light novel. He will only date minimum seven out of tens because or else it'd be embarrassing to be seen out in public with them. Says fucking EK, who's barely a fucking seven himself. Really way more into it. In the LM, there are lots of moments of them bickering with each other as early as one really? and two. And oh, they are they, they kind of already talking shit. They kind of hang out. OK, they ultimately end up. Oh, also, also, I, I want to know. Who is Hondo's voice actor? Was he actually registered? Has he been registered since season one? Has Hondo's voice actor just not been doing anything since season one? Or did he just like, what's going on? Is there, is there some other spare ad voice actor that's the voice lining for Hondo? What's going on here? Secretly going out with each other in volume 7.5. Wait, 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 what? There are lots of moments of them bickering with each other as early as volume two, and they ultimately end up secretly going out with each other. What? in volume 7.5 EK was already getting bitches back then? What? He's cheating on Kushta EK is fucking secretly going out with Shinohara and, and, and he's fucking double timing with Kushida dude EK is a fucking player Also an interesting fact is that Ayano Koji is the only one who knows about them because he stumbled upon on their date of this course information he did. also makes the final scene of the episode hit way more harder. Oh, because Shinohara is not just some random girl that he has a crush on, but rather a girl that he pretty much kind of goes going out with. So I see the anger was even more pronounced. It makes more sense. When EK is defending Shinohara from Yamauchi. <laughs> Moving on, we have a... <laughs> defending her from Yamauchi. <laughs> makes it sound like Yamauchi is like physically assaulting her. Instead, he's verbally assaulting her. <laughs> scene where Kyo goes to visit Ichinose, and this was before he went there at night. When Hashimoto was stalking Ayana Koshi, Kyo actually knew that he was being stalked. And other people said in the comment section, not sure if this is spoilers, but basically Koji knew he was being trailed the entire time, and the entire dialogue with Koji and K was framed such that Koji was trying to kind of imply that, hey, you think that we're being stalked? Yo, yo. I think that someone's watching us. K, come on, figure it out. Figure it out. Can you figure it out? So he knew this entire time. He was kind of like coaching her. And still decided to go meet with Ichinose to throw Hashimoto off. Though he could not actually meet her at the time because a bunch of Class B girls were gathered outside her room. Moving on her to harem. the Kyo and K scene. I was genuinely surprised that almost every single line of this conversation made it into the anime. K is finally getting the justice that she deserves, actually getting all her lines, you know, through. And Suzune, not to be seen at all. I double checked, and this was exactly the same as the LN. Plus the iconic Kyo and Kyo. Yes, I, as soon as they showed me this, like, the cameraman was, like, panning down slowly with this, like, fucking, I don't know. The pose is clearly way too out there to be not an important illustration. So this was a light novel illustration where K is just not even looking. 
I don't, was Koji even looking this way? I'm not really sure. But basically, both sides weren't making any eye contact. You know, she just gave me chocolates. You know, it's like, you know, here it is. Illustration looked pretty good as well. Yeah, just like that. It was exactly like this. Though one difference is that before Hashimoto approaches them, we actually get a Hashimoto POV chapter going through his Ayano Koji stalking sessions what? and getting more insight into Hashimoto as a character and his motivation. Oh, that would have been actually nice to see, but I could see why they cut that off. Patience. We also see him getting Valentine's chocolate from another classy girl, but this guy decides that I He sped up his pace a bit as he made his way to first year class C, trying to make up for lost time. There was currently one person occupying far more of his attention than Motodoi. <laughs> Motodoi is the girl that is getting ignored that's trying to give him chocolates. And it was a boy from class C named Ayano Koji Kiyotaka. Why can't I stop thinking of Bro has the fucking Manabu syndrome. Why can't I stop thinking about him? Murmured Hachimoto. A part of it couldn't help but wonder. The Koji Riz dude. Manabu's fucking obsessed. Ryun's obsessed. Hachimoto's obsessed. Everybody's obsessed, dude. Ayano Koji is way more important at the moment. Bro is so obsessed with him, you'd think he's another one of Kyo's love interests. Yeah, interest, pretty much. Especially because the anime cuts out most of his talking sessions. If I remember correctly, there are like eight different times where he was talking Ayano Koji. Back in the mountain arc. And the POV chapter ends with him approaching Kyo and K. And this scene also had almost every single line adapted into the anime, which I did not expect at all. Also, side note, but Hashimoto's reaction when Ayano Koji said he's leaving was. Mm, he probably threw him off so much, right? Because this entire confrontation with the wall bang was almost like what Ryun was doing in season two and one of. More than season two, where, you know, Ryun was like unexpectedly, no one invited him. We're just eating lunch. Ryun and gang show up, it's like, oi, what's up, Susan? And he shows up there, fucking grabs the hair, <laughs> sniffs it, and then just wants to see Will Ayano Koji reacts. He's not really reacting. I think this is the same thing with Hashimoto, going, like, boom, wall bang technique. What's up? Koji walks away. Not expect at all. Also, side note, but Hashimoto's reaction when Ayano Koji said he's leaving was priceless. Bro did not Bro expect that at all. Bro was just flabbergasted. And now moving on to the yes, the chocolate. The chocolate. Whoa! Oh, it's all in Japanese. At least the anime episode that I watched had a little, you know, English subtitles. Which Kyo got? The first one was from K, K. as we saw. The second one was actually from Kyori, who oh. asked him to come to the library. Sakura and Haruka. Did that scene get cut off? The library scene, chocolate Hiyori. Oh. Haruka gave him the other two. Okay, Haruka and Sakura, the other two. Which Akito and Yukimura also ended up getting. And the kind of counts as giddy chocolate if Yukimura and, you know, uh, the other guy also got it too. Final one was by none other than Kushida. <laughs> no. Do not eat that chocolate. Absolutely fucking not. You know what we should do with that chocolate instead? We should fucking put that in the fucking rice porridge we're making for Nichinose so that we can poison her so that she can be broken down more so that she's gonna rely on us. That's what we should do with the rice porridge. In fact, I hope Koji fucking did that with the chocolate, dude, anticipating that it's fucking poison. Now, you might be wondering, why would she give them to Ayano Koji? Is she a sundere? Well, it's because... I bet it's fucking actually poisoned! She gave chocolates to every single first year in the entire school. Damn, she must have gotten a lot of fucking points. Holy shit. I mean, that is our character since, you know, episode one of trying to suck up to every person, trying to appeal to them. So in order to hold that image, I guess giving everybody giddy chocolates like that does make this kind of count. Yeah. Look, as much as I hate Kushida, I have to respect her dedication to the act. Moving. She is on the hustle. She is on the hustle. You know what I like to see, actually? I would like to see the perspective of Nagumo. Did Nagumo get any chocolate from who? On, the Ichinose scene actually had two differences in it. The first being, Kiyo did not actually make porridge for her. And oh, the second oh, oh. difference is that, Kiyo did not actually say, this will do in the LN. So, so this is an anime only scene? The porridge? So my guess, based on this suspicious looking porridge and based on what his acts have been in the past of breaking people down is literally as simple as food poisoning to make Ichinose even more sick so that she's gonna completely rely on us because so far she still has a guard up and is, you know, still not accepting our help. So what does Anakoji do in this instance? You know, similar to Marikita or waterboarding K, just fucking make Ichinose even more sick. The second difference is that K 
he or did not actually say interesting enemy only seen the alan at this point you're supposed to believe he just went there to check up on her and the fact that he had another per no the anime is doing this specifically to point out that Kyo is indeed poisoning her while in the light novel there wasn't any indicators because that this will do being left out right i feel like it's an anime only direction to do that based on what mr baseballist you pen is saying purpose was supposed to be revealed later in the volume yeah and now moving on to the final scene of the episode <sighs> which was the rumors this was your who started the rumors See, I was very tunnel vision last episode on, it was like, it was Yamauchi. Yamauchi had to do it because Yamauchi was with Arisu. Arisu was spreading rumors and shit to destroy people. It makes sense that Yamauchi is the agent sent by Arisu to do that. But then I thought about, hold up. We know a character that already does this shit before. In fact, she already destroyed an entire classroom before. Kushida, right? So suddenly I'm realizing, oh, wait, 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 wait. Maybe Yamauchi isn't the sole person, you know, spreading these rumors. Maybe it's Kushida. Why would Kushida want to do it though, huh? Why would Kushida want to destroy Class 1C right now? I don't fucking know. She's talking to Nagumo right now though, right? So like, the prime perpetrators right now is either Yamauchi, who's been, you know, fucking... <laughs> who's been coerced by Arisu. Or it's Kushida with the combined joint effort with Nagumo and someone else. I don't really know. Or at the end, it's just some other character that I would have never known. Fuck it. Maybe it's Chabs, man. Maybe Chabashir wants to do this shit, dude. Another scene which was adapted fairly decently. Though this scene doesn't actually end where this episode ends. There's a chance Poor the rest Hondo. of it gets adapted in the next episode. Wait, the drama isn't over? We're gonna start next episode immediately back with the fucking Yamagod Black Room 1v10 style? So I'm not gonna mention it in case it does what? get adapted. The best has yet to show yet? It's not over? Oh! Oh my god, the beginning of next episode. Oh, as soon as we finish the, the daily quote of the day, we're gonna get right back into it. Oh shit, okay, okay. But if it does get skipped, I will make sure to start the video. All right, time. all right. And that is all the... Y'all know what to do. Please go subscribe to Mr. Basis View Pen. Like his videos if you did. He always, you know, gives us a good breakdown of what's been cut off in the light novel. And goddamn... There has been more content, sorry, more drama. Like the drama we saw at the end of the last episode is not even the real deal. It's just setting up the stage for something to happen that hasn't happened yet. Oh, two more days, guys. Two more days and we will see the final product of the worst human in the of the fucking black room versus perhaps the perfect human. I had a Koji from the white room.